a solution for internet access uh, at sea. So this presentation will start with a brief introduction of the scenarios we are tackling. Uh, what is the rel uh, relative work and the previous work maritime communication? What is the concept and the architecture of, of Bluecom um, solution? Also the simulations results made with NF3 network simulator. Then what was the demonstrator and our uh, conclusions and future work? So at this moment, uh, you can see on the, on the map, Portugal is a very, very small country in Europe. However, uh, the, um, the ocean area that uh, is um, on, beha on behalf of, of Portuguese uh, nation is all of that area in the um, yellow line. So that huge area corresponds to about uh, over 90% of the European area. Uh, so it's a very, very large territory to, to, to monitor. And at, at this moment, we need um, solutions for monitoring the maritime uh, ecosystems and their d diversity. And also all of the blue economy. What is the economy? The tra traditional activities, which are the transportation, so the goods and people transportation at sea. Also fisheries that can bring us fo uh, food every day and also some emerging activities, such as deep sea mining, uh, surveillance missions, and scientific research. Also, there is a strong need for disseminating this data that is collected at sea. Um, we, we collect this data from intelligent platforms, such as the ones that you see on the, on the, on the top. Those vehicles are autonomous vehicles, so small submarines that can go uh, into a, a mission autonomously. Uh, also surface vehicles on the top, so they go on the surface of the water, can be used for rescue missions, for example, or if you have some uh, disaster or some uh, oil in the water, they can make a, a, area, a safe area to control the, the petrol spread. Also we have uh, bottom vehicles, so, so vehicles can go to the bottom of the sea to, to make some inspections or deep sea mining. And also, we need to, to make the maps of the sea. As you have Google Maps on land, we need also uh, the maps for the, the sea bottom. Uh, also, we need um, internet-based applications. So when you are at sea, you will want internet connectivity as you are on land. You want to connect to people uh, on land and not to be isolated in these remote areas. So what's the, the problem? Uh, nowadays, we have only a few solutions to communicate at sea. The first one is HF, which is very narrow band and cannot uh, transmit video, for instance. We have satellite, of course, a uh, uh, wide area network, but the cost is very high. We need very uh, um, expensive equipment and also monthly fees, and the bandwidth is very, very small. We have also chef videos that are mainly used for um, voice communications. It can be used for digital communications, but it's very, very narrow band and it's a half duplex system. Of course, we have as well uh, the mobile operators, the 3G and 4G networks, but their coverage is very near to shore. So some, some kilometers from shore and there is no service. So at this moment, there is no communication solution that is cost effective and that can be used for broadband communications uh, at remote ocean areas. So our objective with uh, this project was to go beyond 100 kilometers from shore and to provide at least one megabit per second uh, connectivity to, to these vehicles. We want to support these ASV uh, vehicles. So it's a remote controlled vehicles or autonomous vehicles that um, its data can be retrieved uh, wirelessly and also support this uh, AOV's operation from, from shore. At this moment, um, what has been studied so far was WiMAX. As we all know, WiMAX requires a license and its range is quite limited because of the 5 gigahertz band. Also, the antenna's height is a very strong issue. So because of the, the, um, the long distances, the the, um, the Earth curvature uh, doesn't help. 
uh, and also there's, there are some reflections on the, on the sea waves. Uh, of course, we can use multi-op networks based on WiMAX to increase the range, but still, WiMAX was not a, a good solution for, for this problem. So we started uh, back in 2012, 2013, to build this Marbed um, test bed. So the Marbed was the first uh, draft of, of, of this work. Uh, it consisted in two uh, stations on shore and several uh, fishing ships that were spread near the, the Portuguese coast. So we had these two land stations. We had uh, the two different frequencies, 700 megahertz, so the TV white spaces uh, band that were released from the analog television, and then the 5.8 gigahertz. So the two stations were in the north of Portugal, and the internet was provided by Porto Digital Network, which belongs to the city hall. So with this, uh, so we were giving free internet to fishing ships, so as far as they were quite close to shore, they could access the internet uh, without, without any cost. So this was the installation. We had, we had a 2.4 um, gigahertz access point to the clients inside the fishing ship, and then the 5.8 antenna and the 700 antenna to, to shore. These were the, the ranges, so we could get at most 13 kilometers from shore with very low bandwidth, but up to nine kilometers we could go uh, exceeding one megabit per second, which was uh, our, our target. The question is, how can we improve this range? How can we go even further down than those 13 kilometers? So we came up with the Bluecom um, concept. This concept um, considers the helium, bal helium balloons that are tethered to these fishing ships or any other platform at sea. So we, we, we raise these helium balloons to take advantage of the height or uh, of the antenna being, being uh, better for line of sight uh, communications. Um, also taking advantage of this TV white spaces frequency, of course, for long range, and being, uh, being able to provide uh, internet to ships, to these ASV vehicles and the, the, um, the UVs vehicles underwater. So our idea was to cover this 100 kilometer range from shore using low power wireless technology because uh, satellite uses a lot of power as well. And also using standard wireless uh, access technologies. So between the balloons, we have the TV white spaces, but between the balloons and the, the clients, we wanted standard access technologies. So this is the architecture of the, um, the network. We have um, a land wireless router that is installed in this case uh, in a lighthouse because it's taller and um, we can take advantage of that height. Between the, the balloons we have a network of 500 megahertz or 700 megahertz and between the, um, the balloons and the surface we can have uh, regular Wi-Fi or an LTE um, uh, Pico station. We use a multi-op network, of course, for extending the, the coverage even further. We tested this architecture in Network Simulator, the NS3, to try to see what would be the expected values in terms of throughput. Um, and we, we came up with these results. So if you wanted to go more than uh, 10 or 15 kilometers between each balloon, of course, you needed to go to lower frequencies. So we were expecting that the 500 megahertz frequency would go around 50 kilometers. Of, co of course, this is a, a, um, the best scenario. We have uh, the, the wave movements and all of the losses uh, in real deployments, but we were expecting uh, about 50 kilometers from, from shore. Uh, if you w we want to see how much would, um, would be the, the radius of the cell from the balloon, uh, in a 2.4 gigahertz cell, we'd go about two kilometers from the, um, the balloon. And if you go for an LTE Pico station, we could go up to 25, 30 kilometers, which means that if you build a Pico station in, in the balloon, we could go um, seamlessly between shore and this 100 kilometers and have this, this full coverage. If we sum up all of these architectures, so the land station, the two hops in the balloons, and the access to the clients, we were expecting uh, around 1 or 1.5 megabit per second throughput. 
So we wanted to test how this works in real life. This was the, the proof of concept prototype. We made three, uh, three C trials, one in July and September 2016, the, the latest one in April this year, and one demo um, in September last year. So the first trial, this is the balloon on the left. It's quite large. It's a seven meter um, cubic, seven cubic meter. Uh, this was the, the vessel that was used. It belongs to, uh, to IPMA, which is the Meteorologic um, Institute in, in Portugal. And on the right is the ASV, the surface vehicles. And we raised the balloon up to 120 meters from, from the seafloor. The sea this is the, um, the land station, so inside the lighthouse, because it's a very, very high, it's 168 meters from the sea level. This was the path from the same, the, the first uh, sea trail. So we could go around 40 kilometers from, from shore with, uh, with uh, the straight line. Um, these were the, the conditions, so we were in open sea and the balloon was tethered by two cables, one main cable and a security cable, and we could access internet uh, as soon as we, we raised the, the balloon. So it's, it's very interesting that you have internet in this middle of nowhere. You just uh, raise up your cell phone and, and browse the internet. On the second sea trial, we were using two balloons. So we had to carry these balloons in the huge vans to transport them because they were filled with, with helium. So the second sea trial, we used a larger uh, ship from Hydrographic Institute we were using two of these uh, balloons. Also, we are testing the, AS, the AUV, so the, um, we have connectivity um, to, the, um, to the small submarine, the autonomous submarine that we, we are using. And also, we tested acoustic communications to underwater. So we could access uh, these devices this device from underwater using acoustics and then control them from, from the land station. Um, these were the conditions at sea, so we had good food on board, which was not very bad. The problems were the waves, which were not very funny. This is the lighthouse, in, in case you didn't see any of, of a lighthouse. So it's a one kilowatt lamp uh, to be able to see from long distances. And it's good that you do not seek because opening a shell window with these waves is not very, very funny. These were one, one, 1 1.5 waves, uh, so it was not that bad. Oops, sorry. These were the path for three days. So on the, the first line was the one hop, and then we have the second hop uh, co communication too. And the, the total distance was uh, 50 kilometers uh, in, this, in this demo. The, we tried a Skype call uh, to check how was the, the communication. It was pretty normal. So considering that you were 50 kilometers from, from shore, you could make a video call perfectly and also accessing the, the internet from the balloon. So the, th the throughput was about 1, 1 1.5. So it's a pretty normal internet experience. Then we made a third C trial again to check some more details on the, the, the working of the, the balloon. And also, oops. I think we lost something.
maybe I will unplug again. So and on this, the third C trial, we wanted to test the equipment that is on the left, that is a camera that is attached to the, to the, the ship. So the equipment, the control equipment is on the right. And we wanted to control this equ equipment from land. So the guy at, at the, um, the office could control that camera from, from the, the shore. So this is, these are some images taken from the bottom of the ocean. So it uh, makes a video and photographs of the bottom. And this was the, the traffic that was generated by, by the remote access from the, um, from the office. So we can see some, some sand and some, some uh, objects on the sea bottom. And Gayat Ipma in Lisbon was in its comfort of the, his desk accessing this, these images. So they were being broadcasted by the balloon uh, network. Then we made a final demo of the project. We went to Azores Islands, so in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, so it was a, a final demo of the project. Another lighthouse, we were pointing this equipment to the open ocean. And we were testing about 20 kilometers from, from shore. So these are some images of the ship from the University of Azores. And the internet access was about 1.2 megabit per second. The upload was limited by our 3G connection at the lighthouse, which was quite poor. And again, this, these ships are made for uh, fish control, so the species growth control. And you can, we could use this, this ship for this, this test. Then this is, this is the image from the balloon itself. It's a pretty shaky movement. Let me try to put this forward. So as soon as the balloon goes up, it shakes a little bit. <laughs> so this movement, this movement, of course, is translated to the antenna. So the antenna is also moving. And that so the signal is changing like 20 dBs each four or five seconds. So there was a, a, a huge uh, change in the antenna gain. But then it, st it stabilizes a little bit on higher altitudes, so it's easier to, to manage. So then it goes a little bit more soft in the end, more or less. <laughs> then we were giving internet access to the, the fishing men on board. Of, of course, they were pretty happy. OK, I can go to Facebook in the middle of the ocean. And of course, we have food on board, because it's just to pick up some, some very good fish and eat on board, of course. So as conclusion, um, we need some, some way to communicate at sea, so at remote ocean areas. And to go in this paradigm of Internet of Things, now we have Internet of Underwater Things. Um, and we need to provide communication to, to, those, to those areas. And the problem is the lack of an affordable broadband communication solution. And we believe that with Bluecom, we can give this cost effective. We just need to raise a balloon um, and have a way to, to communicate to, to shore. We showed uh, ranges about 50 kilometers. We believe that we can go even further and about one, one megabit per second for the, for the users. So in these demos, we could also communicate with these 
AVs and ASV vehicles and underwater acoustic communications, which was a very, very interesting scenario. Um, as a future work, we want to work on stabilizing the antenna, so having an array, array of antennas and try to align the beam to cope with the movement. So we do, we do not want mechanical uh, solutions to, to align the, the antennas. And also um, create an algorithm for adjusting the height of the balloon. Because depending on the height, you have different ref reflections on the, on the sea. Um, and you need to adjust the height to have the, the best signal possible. So as a conclusion, there, there's just um, a small video. So just if you are curious, just a brief overview of this, of this project. If we have sound. No. Let me try again. We, we can listen, but very, very low. Let me try to put this. Now it should. Are a national and EU priority. Besides the traditional activities such as fisheries, maritime transportation, and recreational sailing, there is an increasing interest in deep sea mining, environmental monitoring, and marine research, namely using autonomous vehicles. The support of these activities demands new wireless communication solutions that enable broadband internet access at sea in alternative to expensive and narrow band satellite communications. Fund by Norway, Iceland and Liechtenstein through the EEA grants, the Blue Compass project is coordinated by Ines Tech in partnership with IBNA and the Norwegian company Marlo. Blue Compass is pioneer worldwide and enables broadband affordable internet access in remote ocean areas up to several kilometers from shore using any legacy mobile device. The use of helium balloons equipped with communication nodes that work both as Wi-Fi or 4G access points and repeaters to other balloons enables the creation of a broadband flying wireless network that extends coverage from one or more terrestrial stations to offshore zones. With Bluecom Plus, after performing a mission at sea, an autonomous vehicle can upload the collected data to the cloud using the Wi-Fi access provided by the nearest balloon. The Bluecom Plus communication nodes are powered using batteries deployed on board the balloons, which can be recharged using renewable energy sources, making the system self-sustainable from the power point of view. Considering the lack of broadband communications and the increasing activity at sea, the Blue Compass technology has a great economic 
potential and impact on several sectors of the blue economy and contributes to bring further the digital economy to the sea. Okay, and this concludes my presentation. <laughs> so, uh, thank you very much for your presentation. We have no time for talks. So I, I love the strategy using helium balloons and I'm sure it would solve many of our problems that we have with Funkfire in the city as well. I would need one for my house, but how much is it? And, and the, the follow-up question would be, uh, how long will it work and can I reuse it? The, the, balloons, the balloons itself? Yes. So this... Uh, this, these balloons were used to test what would be the, in, the um, defect on raising the antenna to that altitude. How would the, the communication be? What would be the, the best model, the propagation model that fits this solution? Uh, it's up to, to anyone to, to have this kind of solution. It's not very expensive. Um, of course, you need to have... Uh, access to the airspace in that area or at least to ask permission to raise these these balloons to a certain uh, height because of the the airplanes um, but if you want to build a fast network for some sort of disaster uh, or for some some scenario that you do not have access quickly you can build a network like this uh, so it's a, a solution if it's a helium balloon or any other platform that can raise the antenna to this altitude for example you can also have a uh, tethered drone, so drone that, uh, that has the energy from the ship itself and tries to stabilize in a certain height. It would be the, the same effect as, as the... So our idea here was just to test what would be uh, the, the, um, the effect on raising this at this altitude uh, and having this airborne network uh, so that anyone can, can use later on. So this idea can, can be used by anyone who wants it. This, these balloons are, they are uh, available from the manufacturer, so we didn't manufacture these balloons. Uh, it should cost around uh, 7K for, for the balloon and the winch and the cables and all of the, the equipment. Um, so if you, if you compare it to a, a satellite solution, uh, it's much less, less expensive. Uh, and you own this network. So on top of this, you can, can control the network as, as you want. How many times a year could you sail out with these balloons? I mean, is it a good weather solution? With, um, in our tests, we, could, we had winds up to 30 knots uh, in our tests, but it can go a little bit higher than 30 knots. Um, the thing, if the weather is worse than 34, not, then you will not go to sea because it's quite dangerous. Um, it is not dependent on the, the waves itself. Uh, the maximum limit is the 50 km per hour wind, which is quite a lot. So, But I mean like uh, rain, thunderstorms, maybe a sandstorm, well, it's not sea, but... I if mean, it's really, really bad, then you have to, to, to put it down. But of course, in, the, in those conditions, you will not go to sea uh, of, often. Um, but then you could have some sort of, okay, if the wind is higher than, than 50 km per hour, just have to, to collect the balloon. Uh, we have another question from the IRC. Uh, have you tried slotted waveguide antennas which have a narrow beam on the horizon? No, these are dipole antennas, so simple antennas, um, because of the, you, we have weight limitations in the balloon with, we only had uh, some grams for the antenna itself. Um, so the next step would be to try to have some sort of stabilization on, on that beam or using an array of antennas and try to, to, to have those antennas, the beam being more aligned. But that's, that's a big issue. Um, so the propagation, so the movement is, is very uh, fast. It's, it's quite hard to, to have a, a a stable signal in, the, in these conditions. But still, 
of course, if we can improve at least six or 10 dBs with another uh, kind of antennas, that would mean 20, 30 kilometers more than, than the 50 that we got, of course. So did I understand correctly that you are building the antennas yourself or are you buying them somewhere? No, we build the, the antennas. Um, so all, 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 of, all of them were tested for these frequencies because it's not, it's not easy to get 500 megahertz antennas on, on the market, of course. Uh, you already mentioned it by yourself that you can also raise a drone. Um, so isn't this the better solution? Than the balloons? Yes. Well, it, it depends on the capabilities of the drone. This is a more simple solution that does not require um, expensive equipment. I mean, you said the balloon is somewhere around uh, 7,000 euro, mm -hmm. and the drone is some 100 euros. If it's a tethered balloon, I'm, I'm not sure what is the price. So it has to carry uh, a lot of weight, because all of this equipment you need to carry on. Uh, but if it's a balloon or if it's a tethered drone, drone uh, okay. it's a drone that should handle water and winds of that magnitude uh, and be protected from the, the salt water because this balloon can last long without maintenance. I'm not sure about the drone itself. Uh, good, good thing. Uh, how uh, long can a balloon be in the air? Uh, without ref um, putting more, more helium in, the, in, in that, uh, about one week for this model, because this is a quite small model from the manufacturer. The large ones can go like one month or so, okay, okay, without okay. any maintenance. Thank you. Okay. Which uh, hardware did you use for the, the radio device, and mm -hmm. which firmware it ran, and well, more okay. details on, on that? We, we used Alex board uh, in some cases and uh, the router station, the old Ubiquiti router station boards and some Doodle Labs equipment for the TV white spaces um, frequencies. Then the, the package and the, the battery and the power were made by us as well as antennas. <laughs> Are you also planning to do some testing between two balloons? Because I couldn't help noticing that you were using a quite directional antenna at the shore, so... On shore, yes. Then between the balloons, there are omnidirectional antennas. So the multi-op network we tested with two balloons. So it was between the lighthouse and the first balloon, and then the, the first with the, with the second. Uh, so you already tested between two balloons? Between two okay. balloons, yes. And what kind of distance did you get there? Between the balloons, a little bit more uh, difficult to get higher distances, around 10 kilometers between them. Um, it's, it's harder to, to get good quality signal between two balloons. Between shore, okay, you, you have a more directional antenna, it's easier to do. Um, so that also has to do with the stabilization you are trying to work on? Mm -hmm. Exactly. How, how did you do the multi-op network? Since this, this test was just with two balloons, we used just uh, IP, uh, just a layer three routing, just a very simple solution. Because, uh, of, of course, if you want to have a, a much larger number of balloons, you need to have a layer two solution, for instance. But this was just to, to, ha to test the connectivity, so just a simple solution, and uh, not having other aspects into consideration. Hi. Um, do you think it would be practical at all to think about like, because you know I know that like a lot of the underwater fiber has like repeaters periodically. Mm -hmm. Had you thought about potentially like somehow connecting to those and relaying off of that or something? From those repeaters. Yeah, or possibly adding additional repeaters that would that would then serve this other purpose. The problem is the depth of those cables. Uh, they can be one kilometer. Uh, or more, um, so it's quite hard to get those cables to come to the surface in a permanent, a permanent way. We have some offshore platforms like uh, wind farms and so on um, that have uh, um, fiber connections to, to those places, 
but I believe bringing from those repeaters to to the surface is is quite hard. It will be one or two or even five or more kilometers from from, from the bottom. Even in this area, uh, the depth was around one kilometer where we were testing. So it's not, not very hard to bring it to the surface. Is there one last question? Anyone? Okay. Did you experience any um, issues specific to the, the water? Any physical obstacles? Is it, uh, how is reflection with water? How is that working? Or? That, that's an interesting topic. Because even if you, if you try to guess what would be the reflection on the, on the sea bottom, um, on the sea surface, sorry, if you have waves, that surface will not be a flat, a flat surface as in land. Um, so it's always like changing the point of reflection and the way that the, the re reflected wave um, interferes with your signal. So it's very hard to predict what is the, the, the best model and what is the expected signal. So it changes quite a lot because of, the, of that surface, it's not flat. One of the ways to solve this is uh, it to raise um, at the minimum altitude that the reflected wave it does not interfere so much. So if you go higher than 100 meters or 150, 150 meters, that effect is lower. If you go just, uh, it's, it's very difficult to communicate when you do not raise this antenna. So if you are just uh, putting in a, a mast, if, even if it's five or six meters, uh, it will have a strong effect on the, on the water. So, all in all, it sounds like a lot of research has to be done, and we will hear more from you in the next couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> but last year it was underwater communication that I was presenting, so the idea is to combine those underwater communications with these uh, maritime communications and have end-to-end -end communications to the middle of the ocean. <laughs> Last year you got the data from the from underwater to the boat and now you're sending it to the shore. Yes. yes. <laughs> Sounds That's great. <laughs> Round of applause for Philip. <laughs> <laughs>